This is a quick introduction to MLAPI, a Unity networking library. To use it, go to mlapi.network, click on download, then click on MLAPI installer Unity package to download it. Now go across to Unity. I've already created a fresh project using Unity 2018. MLAPI will work in 2017, 18 and 19. Now to install that package, I go to the Assets menu, click on Import Package, Custom Package, and double click that, and then I click Import. Now that that's installed, when you go to the Window menu, you will see a MLAPI item. You click on that, and you can then install the latest copy of MLAPI. It will download and install the latest release. Uh, optionally, you can install a transport. By default, it comes with a UNET transport, but there are other ones here. Ruffles is also by the same author of MLAPI. But for now, we'll close this because we've installed it. And what we can do is we will create a scene with a floor and a player to move around. So we will create a plane to represent the floor. Um, we will now create a capsule to represent the player. The capsule's in the ground so I can move it up one unit. We want to add to this capsule a character controller component. Now to make the character move around we need to add a script to it. If you Google character controller move for Unity you should find this page in the documentation in the script reference where it has an example script that you can utilize to provide input to your character controller. The example here is just called example class, so I'm just going to stick with that. I'm going to add a component, call it example class, click on new script, create an add. That will add that component to my player. I can either double click on that script there or over here double click on it to bring it up um, in my editor. I can select this, control V, and let's save this. So that is now added to the player. Let's go back to Unity. Now if I hit play here and click on the scene, I can now move my character around using that script. Now to make this multiplayer, what we need to do is add a couple of components to this character. So I will add the networked object which is a component provided by MLAPI that lets uh, MLAPI send information back and forth across the network about this particular um, game object and another component which I'll add is network transform and that sends information across the network with regards to where this uh, game object is located where its transform is. There are other um, third-party libraries you can use for this which the author of MLAPI has said could be better than his, but as the point of this example is just to show a basic working um, example of MLAPI, so we'll just stick with what the one he's written. Now, that has added the two networked uh, components we need for the character, but we now need to add a network manager to the scene, so I'm just going to call this network and the component we need to add to it is a networking manager. Now the things you need to change here are you need to select a transport so here I'll just select unit transport had I installed any of the other transports they would also come up in this list and I can select that here and because I have added um, a networked object component to this capsule I can actually now add it to this list of network prefab. So if I create a slot here, I can now, well, first of all, I need to create a prefab from this. So I'm just going to drag this capsule from my hierarchy into my project and I'll delete it from the scene. And I'll click on my network again and I will drag this across from the project to the list of networked prefabs and leave it there. Now to demonstrate this in action, I'll just save the scene and I will hit play. Now if I scroll down if 
in this I'm currently looking at the inspector for my network object if that's not there you can actually you'll find it under don't destroy and click on it there um, you can go down to start host sorry stop host uh, start host stop host oh I forgot to click default player prefab so let's stop this let's tick on that now what default player prefab does is automatically spawn that item now you can have a list of other network prefabs so any other items that need to have information sent about them across the network in the game um, whether that's uh, players or just various objects in the game that need information shared across the network about where they are or what they're doing or whether whatever other information needs to be sent but if you want them automatically spawned you have to click default player prefab so now if I run the scene again and I scroll down and click start host it'll create my player in the scene and I can move that around now I'll click stop now the three options here are start host start server and start client start host creates both a server and a client on the one instance of unity start server only creates the server and start client only creates the client so for example when I just started this and hit play and I create and I click start host it creates a server and then creates a client and connects to it and that's how I get my player in the scene what we now want to demonstrate is a second player connected to this same scene moving around so to do this you need to either build this project um, and run it but then you don't have access to this side panel and you would have to write code that would start host or start server and start client but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial so instead another mechanism that you can use is to copy your project and create sim links so that you can run two instances of your project in two different unity editors now to demonstrate this what I will just do now is I'll just save this scene as it is now and I'll make sure to save the project now I'm going to minimize this and minimize that minimize that now on my desktop I have this project is called test so forget about this folder here that was from a previous example I'll just delete that so test is our project that we've currently got I'm going to copy that here to create a copy of it now in order to run we'll like skip that file it's a unity lock file doesn't matter about that now in order to run both of these as two separate units I could just now go to um, unity hub and add that project um, I could also create sim links first of all I'll just, I'll just run it this way just to demonstrate so I'll add this project so I'll add test to or test copy just go select folder so test copy is now there I can start it so these this is a copy of the test project as it was in the state where I just left it so if I now open the sample scene you'll see that it has the plane that we created I can now click on the network click on play and if I click start host here and I can move my character around in fact I'll just move this over to the side and I'll put our other window here and over in this window I'll also click click play but instead of clicking um, start host I will click start client and you'll see that they now appear next to each other so if I click on this window and move it you'll see that it moves in both and if I click on this window you'll see that it moves in both um, if you wanted to work ongoing and have these side by side and have the changes in one be identical to those in the other what you need to do is sim link the projects now I'll just demonstrate how to do that so I'll just stop play on both of these I'll close uh, that project there and I'll leave open our original test project now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this test copy folder and create a couple of what, what are called sim links and they're basically shortcuts to folders um, but they act as if they are the folder as opposed to a, a shortcut that takes you there they, for all intents and purposes Windows thinks they're one and the same in order to do this you need to open up a command prompt 
in Windows as an administrator. You can find that in your start menu, but I've just given a shortcut to myself on the desktop. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the address of this folder, which is here. So I've just all I've done was click on the address bar here, select all of that, hit copy. Now over here, I can change to that directory, um, paste that in and hit enter. And that takes me into this folder. I want to um, actually go into this folder and I want to delete the assets and I want to delete the project settings because what we're going to do is sim link those from the original test. So select both of those folders and delete. And what I will do now is create a sim link to those. So I'm going to say the command for that is make link slash capital D and you give it the name of the folder that you want to create. And then you say that I want it to link to uh, tests uh, asset folder. So that's created that sim link. And then you do another one for the project settings. And that's done it for project settings. And as you can see here, you've got project settings and you've got assets. And when I click on that, this folder here is actually the same folder as when I go into assets over here. And just to demonstrate that, if I was to create a new folder here, you'll see that it appears in both simultaneously. But I'll just delete that from that one. And it also deletes it from that one. So from now on, you can actually work in both instances of your game both test and test copy in two separate editors and changes that you make in one will be reflected in the other just to demonstrate this if I was to add to this scene a cube uh, and I'll just put it up in the air somewhere now it's not yet in this other copy but if I go back here and I save the scene then I go back to my other copy of Unity. It says the following scenes have been modified. Do you want to reload? Yes. And there is the cube. So this allows you to do development in either window, make changes, and the other copy of Unity will reflect it. So again, just to demonstrate the working character controller, I've hit play. I click on my network object under don't destroy on load. Start host. There is my character. I can move him around or her. You know, it's 2020. You can be what you want. Uh, now in this version of Unity, I'll click play and I will also go down to network and I will hit start client and I'll put these side by side again just to demonstrate and you can see that this is how easy it is to use MLAPI to do networking. Now again I mentioned before that instead of clicking on the start host and start client uh, buttons in the networking manager component. You can actually write code to do this and you would do that obviously in a more in-depth game, but this is a very basic example of how to get started with MLAPI, which is a great networking library for Unity. Thanks.